Good evening, and welcome to you all. My name is Peter Vermeers, and it's my great honor to welcome here tonight um, an absolute um, world writer, Georgi Gospodinov. And this is going to be an evening full of talk and thinking about literature and books, but no doubt also about history, memory, Bulgaria, Europe, and the tragedies of our time, and perhaps also, I hope, the joys of our time. I probably don't need to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, who Georgi Gospodinov is, and with such a big track record and large list of achievements, I probably couldn't tell you, uh, at least, I mean, I would, it would be impossible to do justice uh, to all of his work um, without reading each and every word of all that work. But I recommend you to read uh, all of that work, not tonight, of course, because we are going to talk tonight, but later, um, and then you will be acquainted with all of that marvelous work. Now, still, I would like to mention a few highlights. Uh, Georgi is a poet, a writer, a novelist, and a playwright. His debut novel was Natural Novel from 1999, which was hailed as a brilliant experimental uh, novel, a machine of stories, it has been called, and it was an immediate uh, international uh, bestseller. Georgie's second novel, The Physics of Sorrow from 2012, won several awards in Italy and Germany, and was also shortlisted for uh, a Penn Translation Prize in uh, the US. And if I'm not mistaken, that book and we will talk about that later, was a response to someone, a journalist who uh, wrote that Bulgaria was the saddest place on uh. earth. <laughs> we will come back to that later. Um, well, he also wrote short stories um, and plays, um, a libretto for an opera, um, a collection of essays, but probably his best known work and uh, the work we are talking about tonight is his latest novel, the book Time Shelter, which um, won the Strega European Prize in 2001 and in 2023, as you know, the International Booker Prize in an English translation by Angela Rodel. And there's a Dutch translation also too, which is called Schuilplaats voor Andere Tijden. Georgi, welcome. Now, we will, would like to start our evening with a reading of a short fragment from the novel Time Shelter to introduce the topic to you, the topic of the clinic about which we will be talking uh, soon more. But I would like to invite Georgi to read that first fragment now in Bulgarian with translation projected on the screen behind us. Dobro večer na vsički. Good evening. We will switch Bulgarian and English. I will read in Bulgaria. I will answer in Bulgaria. Uh, and uh, it's great that there are so many people here. It's always yeah, very moving. I will read uh, part of the beginning of the novel, which explains a bit about clinics for the past. Itaka. С Галстин направихме първата клиника за минало. Всъщност направи я той. Аз бях само помощникът, събирачът на минало. Не беше лесно. Не можеш просто да кажеш на някого, ето това е твоето минало от 1965-та. Трябва да знаеш историите му, а ако вече не можеш да ги получиш, трябва да ги съчиниш. Да знаеш всичко за тази година, кои прически са били на мода, колко заострени са били носовете на обувките, как са ми решили сапуните, пълен каталог на миризмите. Дъждовна ли е била пролетта, какви са били температурите през август, кое е било най-слушаното парче в класациите. Най-важните истории от годината, не просто новините, а слуховете, градските легенди. Нещата се осложняваха според това какво минало искаш да ти се достави. Дали твоето източно минало, ако си от източната част на стената, или напротив, ако си оттам, искаш да изживееш тъкмо онова минало, което ти е било отказано. Да приядеш чуждо минало, като с банани, които си сънувал цял живот. Миналото не е само това, което ти се е случило. 
понякога е онова, което само си съчинявал. Beautiful. So, Jorge, this book is about the past, you could say, about the real past or the imagined past. And it is also about how people are dealing with the past. The first question I would like to ask you, what was your inspiration for writing this book? What was the first spark that gave you the idea of write about how people deal with the real or the imagined past? Всъщност темата за миналото минава през май почти всичките ми книги. In fact, the theme about past is recurring throughout all of my novels and books. И това е това е нещо, което ме интересувало винаги, особено когато се отнася за памета, която имаме за неща, които не са ни се случили. This has always been interesting for me, especially when it comes to memory that we have about things that have never happened. Защото човек има и такава памет и понякога тя е по-важна. Because we also have such a memory and sometimes this memory is actually more important. И защото имаме много не случили се неща. And because we have a lot of things that have not come to pass in our lives. И мястото, откъдето идвам, също има доста не случили се неща. Има дълбоки залежи от не случили се неща. And where I come from, there are many things that did not happen many unhappened things. Uh, in fact, there are deep uh, resources of unhappened things where I come from. Може би добре да да кажа и винаги се опитвам да споменавам това че аз съм живял с моите баба и дядо и те са били важна част от разказването на историите. I should maybe mention that I have lived with my grandmother and grandfather and they are a very important part of storytelling. Те разказваха за миналото, така както магическите реалисти, както Маркес би написал роман. They were talking or telling about the past or telling the past in a way that magical realists like Marquez would write a novel. И това, мисля, че много повлия начина ми написане. And I think that influenced my way of writing a lot. Винаги съм искал да пиша така, както разказват старите хора в България. Да разказват с странични коридори. Да спрат на най-важното място. Да кажат нещо съвсем различно. За да засилят съспенса. To increase the suspense. Да знаят думата suspense. Without knowing the word suspense. И после да се върнат към важното. And to return to the important. И знаете ли кое е най-важно в този начин на разказване? You know what is most important in this way of storytelling. Че няма значение дали разказваш за малки или за големи неща. Всичко е свързано. It doesn't matter whether you are telling a story about big things or small things. In fact, everything is connected. Знаех, че от баба ми, че нашия съсед се е родил с крила под раменете. I knew from my grandmother that our neighbor had been born with wings underneath his shoulders. И надничахме винаги да гледаме, когато се облича ризата, дали тези крила няма да се покажат от някъде. And we were always peeking in to see whether when he's putting his shirt on, maybe the wings would show up from somewhere. Чудото беше навсякъде. И това е много важен опит, когато си дете. The miracle was everywhere, in fact, and that was a very important experience, especially when you are a child. Но да, вие ме питахте за паметта. You asked me about memory. И аз почнах да разказвам точно като тях. And I began telling as they do. But I will come back to memory. Паметта е свързана с историите, всъщност. Memory is related to stories. This is what we need to say. Разказваме истории, за да запомним. We tell stories in order to remember. И това го знаем, разбира се, от Омир и от старите разказвачи. And we know this from Homer and from the old storytellers. Do you think that telling stories about the past could also be 
healing in a way because mm -hmm. you have in your book a lot of references to medicine and, and a lot of re references to literature about mm -hmm. clinics in the past. We could talk about Thomas Mann and there's references to Kafka and all of the things that we will talk about perhaps yeah, yeah. a little bit later on. But I want to ask you about the healing aspect, the medicinal aspect of it. I'm sure, I'm sure. Сигурен съм, защото докато писах книгата, четох много и винаги съм се интересувал от този медицински аспект. I'm sure because while I was writing the book, I read a lot and I've always been interested in the medical aspect of, of it. Самата идея за романа ми хрумна преди около повече от 15 години. I got the idea of, about the novel more than 15 years ago. Но това беше идея за първата част на романа, за тези клиники. But this was an idea about the first part of the novel, about the clinics. Има такава ретроактивна терапия, съществува някъде от 80-те години. There is such retroactive therapy. Um, it is in existence since the 80s. И наистина хората са забелязали, че когато пуснеш някакво, да речем, парче на Битлз, на хора, които са почти загубили паметта си, това ги връща, дава им живот отново, отключва някакви места в паметта. And yes, people have noticed that, for example, when you play a Beatles song to people who have almost lost their memory, um, it helps them relive a moment in their lives. It unlocks something in their memory. Също ние вече знаем, че музикалните структури стоят най-дълго в паметта ни. We also already know that musical structures remain the longest in our memory. И знаем също така, we also know едно от сетивата, което отключва памет много силно, е миризмите, мирисът. We also know that one of the senses that unlocks memory the strongest is actually the sense of smell. И за това героят в романа, помощника на Галстин, всъщност е и събирач на, на миризми, събирач на спомени, събирач на детайли. And this is why the character in the novel, who is Gaustin's helper, um, is also a collector of smells, a collector of details. One of the nice things that happened in the book was that I was invited to different universities in Europe, for example, uh, the Faculty of Neuroscience in Bologna University. <laughs> One of the best things that happened to the book uh, was that I was contacted by different uh, faculties in Europe, for example, the Faculty of uh, Neurosciences in Bologna. И направихме много хубава дискусия с тях. And we also had a great discussion with them. Uh, върху това какво отключва памет, как се съхранява памет, как паметта е част от това да се усещаме човешки същества. On what unlocks memory, what preserves memory, what makes memory the thing that makes us feel human. Uh, от моя страна, моя принос беше да, да казвам как самите истории отключват памет, наред с музиката, с миризмите. My contribution was to say that stories along with uh, smells and music also unlock memories. И най-хубавото е, че хората от различните науки вече се обръщат към литературата и търсят заедно решения на, на въпроси свързани с човека. And the best thing is that people um, from other sciences are turning to literature and are looking for solutions there um, for humanity in general. Имах също така дискусия с теолози от един римски богословски университет и там говорихме за края на времето, за края на света, което също е тема от времето е тема и на богословието. Uh, I also had a discussion with a, a theologist from, the, from, a, from a Roman university where we were discussing mm. the end of time because this is a theological topic. And uh, when we talk about the end of the world, uh, usually we are thinking about the end of the space, about destroying of the world. But actually, the end of the world, the apocalypse is the end of the time. But the end of the time means not not the real end. It means that the past, present and future 
will be present at the same minute, at the, in the same second. If uh, Всъщност, yeah. апокалипсис означава... Uh, there is no need for me to I translate. Think everybody knows. Uh, everybody knows English. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> very, very enthusiastic uh, translator. And, and <laughs> finally, uh, fin finally uh, uh, I, I should say something to praise myself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the best awards that I've received ever was for the physics of sorrow. Uh, so I was invited to be member of the Association of the Physicists oh. in Bulgaria. <laughs> well, I can Nobody tell. knows this, but yeah, yeah. this is... Well, con and congratulations and, yeah. and, and, and well-deserved. No, no, I'm saying that because... I'm saying this because I'm, I'm on the side of literature. And I think that there are many people here on the side of literature. And uh, we should have some, what to say, not dignity, but some... We need to be confident. Yeah. We need to be confident. We need to be confident. Че литературата знае за някои неща от науката доста преди науката да стигне до тях. That literature knows about certain things that are related to science a lot before science actually reaches reaches them. Yes, and um, to facilitate a discussion between scientists and, and writers, I really um, uh, much uh, am in, in, in favor of this. And actually, I was looking a, a few things up about the clinic you have as a you know, magical institution in your book, because it's not that simple that it's just one clinic. It's sort of a... Um, it's more of a concept that dwells through the book, I would say. And in fact, there have been experiments in, at, in, at Harvard University. There's this famous counterclockwise study where they've put people in the 1950s um, and people who were from the 1950s but lost their recent memories. And then by being there, they felt, I, I literally hear a quote from this study, the magic of rejuvenation and ongoing good health uh, because of being aware of the fact that they were suddenly uh, in a time that they already knew from, from before. I want to switch the conversation a little bit now because that's the positive side of going to the past. <laughs> but there's a but, of course, and you talk about this, about this in this book quite a bit too. There's the sickness, I would say, of nostalgia and somehow the political instrumentalization of nostalgia as well through manifestations, political reenactments, and all of that. So I'm wondering, was this book an attempt to show both sides of the coin? Mm -hmm. And why do you think that both sides are important when we are talking about our imagination of the past and going back to the past? Предполагам, че тук всички знаят, че думата носталгия всъщност Името носталгия идва от един швейцарски лекар и това е диагноза, описание на болест през 17 век. I suppose all of you here know that uh, the word nostalgia it was actually invented by a Swiss doctor from the 17th century and in fact it describes a sickness. И е хубаво да имаме това на ум, когато защото обикновено романтизираме носталгията. And it's a good thing to keep in mind because we tend to romanticize nostalgia. I'm also very nostalgic and you can tell by my books. And this is why Time Shelter was a difficult book for me. Някъде след 2016-та тръгна това усещане, че носталгията може да бъде опасна. Somewhere after 2016, I got the feeling that um, no, nostalgia can be dangerous. And of course, this has a political explanation. Populism reached serious heights with the election of Trump. With Brexit. И когато, когато казвам тези неща, аз искам да мислим политическото като нещо лично. And when I say these things, I would like us to think of the political as personal. Защото ние малко си кажем, какво ни интересува Тръмп? Ние сме тук 
Бруксел, София, Тръмп, да му мислят американците. Because we can say, what do we care about Trump? We're here in Brussels, we're in Sofia. The Americans should worry about Trump. Но всъщност това, което се случва на всяк някъде по света, вече много лично засяга всички нас. But in fact, what happens somewhere in the world already very personally affects all of us. Аз помня, когато чухме новината за когато финалните резултати за избора на Тръмп излязоха, беше рано сутринта. I remember when the final election results came out. В Европа беше рано. In, in Europe, um, it was early morning. Всички лоши неща стават рано сутринта. All bad things happen early morning. Всички революции, всички войни. All revolutions, all wars. That's four o'clock. Да. Всички в 4.47 е втората световна война започва на 1 септември. World War II begins at 4.47 a.m. on 1 September. На 24 февруари миналата година руските войски влязоха 5 или 6 минути по-късно, към 4.51. And uh, on the 25th of February last year, the um, uh, Russian uh, troops invaded Ukraine four or five minutes later at around... Um, At that time, my wife was in the house and my wife was crying. So at that time, my daughter was sleeping in the adjacent room and my, my, my wife started crying. Особено лично чувство, предполагам и повечето от вас са го усещали, че а, има неща, които виждаш, че вървят против света и ти нищо не можеш да направиш. Това усещане за бесилие. And I had this feeling um, that most of you probably also had that when things happen in the world, um, when things happen in the world against which you cannot do anything, a feeling of helplessness. И, Единственото, което аз мога да направя е да, да напиша нещо. И тогава се сетих за тази идея стара за гаустин и клиниките за минало. Но реших да я развия към по-опасните референдуми за минало. But I decided to develop it, um, uh, further to the more dangerous referenda for the past. Казвам на късо миналото има тъмна страна и носталгията има тъмна страна. In short, past has a dark side and nostalgia also has a dark side. So, and the people in the book find shelter, and you call, you use this term, time shelter, so it means that they are searching protection from something. Is it protection in the clinic from the time where they currently live in, searching for some safe space That's in why, the imagined past, yeah. or how should we understand this title? Both. Uh, that's why I like Bulgarian title and English ones. It's a time shelter, Vreme uh, Obejiste. I think the best one is in Italian. It's a Chrono Refugio. All titles nice. in Italian sound, sound better. Sounds better. better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because you have both sides. It's a yeah. protection from the time, and protection in the time, into the time. Yeah. So the time could be your shelter, but yeah. also you could hide from the time. Both, both meanings are important. Yeah. So let's, let's talk a little bit, if you want, about the impulse that people have to go back into time and to remember times. I wonder, do they really long to be in the past? And I'm talking about um, ordinary people who lose their memory and, and about people who are in nostalgia projects uh, by, you know, promulgated and uh, promoted by politicians. Do they want to really go to the past? Mm -hmm. Or is it that they want to go to another time in which they can imagine that they can have a better future? And is it not about their mm -hmm. projections of the future rather than really yeah. going back in the past? Yeah, absolutely. Да, много хубав въпрос. Very good question. Всъщност, когато си в ситуация на дефицит на бъдеще, неизбежно тръгваш назад. 
when you're in a situation of a deficit of a future, you inevitably go backward. The two things are connected. И едното обяснение на Галстин в романа е, че ние действително се връщаме назад, за да имаме това бъдеще, което сме преживели напред. And indeed, one of the explanations of Gaustin is that we, we, we go backward, we return to the past in order to have the future ahead of us that we have already led. Защото, uh, вижте кое е особеното с бъдещето. Всъщност, никой от нас no one, sorry. не живее в бъдещето. Uh, the, 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 и няма да живее в бъдещето. The peculiar thing about the future is that none of us are going to live in the future. Uh, ние живеем сега. We live now. Uh, но самото усещане, че имаш хоризонт е страшно важно. But the idea that you have a horizon ahead of you is extremely important. Uh, има нещо, което искам, което в романа се опитвам да някакси да, да поясня. Има разлика между съвсем човешко е да искаш да живееш, да се върнеш в миналото, не да живееш, а да се връщаш в миналото. Ние го правим всеки ден. I'm trying to explain this in the novel. It is very natural to want to go back to the past. We do this every day. Нормално е да влезеш в тази стая на миналото. Аз затова обичам много тази английската UK корицата. It's normal to, to want to enter that room of the past. That's why I really like the English cover. Uh, да два, to stay for an hour or two. Да си от to leave the door ajar. Не се отвътре, <laughs> Never lock the door from the inside. <laughs> и, и след това да And then to, to go out. Това е напълно човешко. Аз го правя непрекъснато. This is perfectly human and I do it all the time. Не човешко и опасно е когато се опиташ да вкараш цял народ в мазето на миналото. What is not human and what is dangerous is to try to put an entire people into the basement of the past. Когато се опиташ да им разкажеш тяхното минало. When you try to tell them their past. И да им кажеш, искате ли пак да бъдете щастливи както бяхте през 70-те? And to, and to tell them, do you still want to be happy as you were in the 70s? Искаме, да. Yes, we do. Uh, но дали ще бъдем пак на 20? But will we be 20 years old again? Тънката подмяна е, че тези, които обещават миналото, тези, които имат носталгия към миналото, всъщност имат носталгия към собствената си младост в това време. The subtle change is that those people who have a nostalgia for the past actually have a nostalgia for their youth. Само че популистите се опитват да опитват да продадат тази носталгия заедно с uh, така носталгията по системата. But да pop- обвържат. Populists are trying to tie in and sell that nostalgia for their youth with the nostalgia for the system just to tie them together. Едно време в България, ако се спомняте, като исках, като продаваха книги, които много се търсят и са дефицитни, обикновено ти предлагаха и още една, която никой не търсиш. Нали, в пакет. If you remember, um, back in the day in Bulgaria, um, when they were selling books that were in deficit, that they were really high, highly sought, out, sought after, they would also try to sell you, along with the very highly sought after book, one that no one wanted. Така си купих кръстника заедно с uh, железния поток на Фурманов. That's железния поток. That's how I bought the Godfather along with the iron uh, stream. By Furmanov. By Furmanov, yes. Uh, t- t- такава подмяна в момента, такава подмяна е подмяната на носталгията към миналото. This is the kind of change that is happening with the nostalgia for the past. И опасното е, че всъщност личното време е невъзвратимо. Това, това е сигурно. Биографичното е невъзвратимо. The personal time, the, the biographical time is, is, uh, is irreversible, exactly. Но историческото и политическото време е обратимо. But the historical and the political is reversible. Тоест, 
съвсем спокойно може да се върне тоталитарна система. In other words, it can very easily return. A totalitarian system can very easily return. Yeah. And maybe we could say that the past, the personal pasts of people have been hijacked by populists to promote mm -hmm. their own political projects sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Reading this book, how important is it to know that this book is written from, let's say, Eastern Europe? Uh, because there's a lot of um, play, I would say, with nostalgia for the socialist past. There's also, you know, a lot of criticism of that nostalgia, that nostalgia for the, for the for the eastern part of the divided Europe at the day. So, um, do you also want to say something in this book about Eastern Europe, or is how should I how should we understand this? Uh, dimension in, 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 in the writing. Аз не обичам много това, как да кажа, разделяне на писатели от Източна Европа и писатели от Западна Европа или от Централна Европа. I don't very much like this division of writers between writers of Eastern Europe, Western Europe and Central Europe. Но има нещо, което трябва да кажем, което все пак дефинира източноевропейското писане. But there is something we should say that still defines Eastern European writing. Което е много силно в последните години. Which is very very prominent in the in, in recent years. И това е една особена чувствителност към а как да кажа към към несвободата, към болката, към към миналото, към неслучилото се. It is a certain sensitivity towards um, pain, towards what didn't happen, towards the past. А това което се случва в момента в Украина е някакси много според мен близко и разбираемо за нас, които сме живели в тази орбита известно време. What is happening currently in Ukraine is we can relate to that because we have lived in the in the orbit of that for a certain amount of time. Когато започнах да пиша времеобежище, да, аз имах главата си, исках да разкажа и разказах в една глава българския случай. When I started writing Time Shelter, um, I, I had already in my mind that, and I did, I, I, I told that in one of the chapters of the book, I wanted to talk about the Bulgarian case. Uh, the nationalism. About the kitsch of nationalism. The na about the reenactments of the past. Но в същото време, пишейки тази книга, Ясно видях, че това не е, не е само български проблем. But at the same time while writing the book, I clearly saw that this is not only a Bulgarian problem. Аз можех да дам от българския си ъгъл, от българското си око някакви обяснения на това, което се случва изобщо в Европа. I could present a Bulgarian angle to this, to what was happening in Europe. Защото когато 89-та се случи, не бяхме изненадани само ние. Because when 1989 happened, when the wall fell, we were not the only ones who were surprised. It is certain that we were not expecting that. Може да го кажем и по-рязко. На нас не съобщиха по телевизията в пет вечерта, че сме свободни. We can even say it in starker terms. We can say that we were informed on television at 5 p.m. that we were free. Но на Запада също беше изненада. But the, the, the West was also surprised. And from then on, we together collectively began to um, learn uh, with each other about the ignorance of what was to come, our collective ignorance of what was to come. Така че през тези години просто трябваше да споделяме опита си. Ние наше от живеещи на изток и този от западния опит за това как да живеем сега заедно. 
какво да правим. So we just had to share our experience of the East with the people who are living in the West to share their experience to see how we can live together, what we can do now. And maybe we were surprised back then by the sudden freedom that occurred uh, both in the East and the West, but maybe now both in the East and the West, maybe we are surprised by how harsh the effects could be from this strong evocation of the past in current politics, and I mean evocation of the Second World War, mm -hmm. or from the Russian mm -hmm. perspective, the Great mm -hmm. Patriotic War, and mm -hmm. what kind of very strong effects it can have on you know, daily lives of people. Wars can be fought in the context of da. that, that mm -hmm. past. Да, за мен това, което се случва в момента е война за минало. Войните не са само за територия, войните са и за минало. Yes, for me, what is happening currently is a war for the past. Wars are not just for territory, they are also for the past. Като започнем дори от най-дребните неща, от това, което казахме, че тази война се случи с по начин, по който тръгна Втората световна война, включително със същото конвенционално оръжие, с танковете, които са малко по-подобрена версия руските танкове. Even when we say, when we start from the smallest thing, like the fact that this war became, began with tanks, the... Конвенционално. The, the, the a conventional weapon that... Uh, някой беше изчислил, че само за а, един месец, първия месец от тази война са изстреляни толкова броя снаряди, артилерийски, колкото в цялата Втора световна война. Someone had calculated that just in the first month of the war there had been so many um, uh, снаряди, shells, shells fired uh, equal, equal to the duration of to the to the amount of shells fired in the duration of the of the of the Second World War. Изобщо сравненията с Втората световна война не прекъснато са преточитени. And the comparisons with with World War II are constantly before our eyes. Това, което в момента вътре в Русия се случва, за което знаем твърде малко, също напомня много на времената от преди. What is currently happening in Russia, for which we know very little, is also very reminiscent of past times. Неща, които ние познаваме. Невъзможността да пътуваш навън. The impossibility to travel outside of your country. Да живееш без Икеа, да речем. To live without Икеа, for example. Да, това са малки неща, но всеки дневният живот човек свиква с тях. Yes, these are small things, but in, in everyday life you get used to them. Дефицит на разни стоки и така нататък, и така нататък. Всъщност виждате как постепенно обществото ще се върне към, към времето на късния социализъм. Дефицит от certain goods and so on and so on and then you see how society gradually returns to the time of late socialism. Аз мисля, че един от проблемите е, е отново свързан с паметта. I think that one of the problems is again connected to memory. Е, от една страна, защото се отиват вече хората и се отидоха много от хората, които помняха Втората световна война. On one hand, because a lot of the people who remember World War II have already passed or are currently passing away. тази жива памет. We don't have this, quote, live memory anymore. И друго много важно, че и победителите, и победените след Втората световна война трябваше да минат през много сериозна рефлексия, а те не минаха. And another very important thing is that both the victors and the vanquished had to go through a very serious reflection um, after World War II, but they didn't. Защото ние говорихме доста за немците след Втората световна война, те си минаха пресада. Because we, we, we talked a lot about Germans, about the Germans uh, after World War II, they went through their hell. А победителите не ги съдят, както знаем. And uh, victors are not being judged, as we know. И това беше проблем, всъщност, в, в историята на СССР не се изработи 
тази пречистваща памет. In the history of the, of the Soviet Union, this um, cleansing memory was not, was not created. Защото ние сега знаем, че са се вършили ужасни неща и от двете страни. Because we know now that horrible things were being done by both sides. Но, дълг, но дълго време това беше абсолютно несъществуваща тема. But for a long time this was a non-existent topic, a taboo. I, w I want to, in a minute, talk a little bit about IKEA back, uh, because I want to ask you about ordinary life. But let's, let's stick for a moment still with the Second World War, because in this book you mention, um, among others, um, uh, the poem that Auden wrote uh, in New York on the 1st of September 1939. So there's this s sense of war that's coming. Yeah. Throughout the book, yes. now you wrote this book in 2019, 2020, mm -hmm. I guess. So, is it a book in which you sort of predict the future in a way that? Yeah, you, you know, uh, uh, it it was very important for me. I I started to work on the book in New York, and I found this a small diary note by Winston Hugh Auden about 1st of September 1939. The poem. You you can. Yes. Uh, you can uh, read in the book. And this poem, it's a great poem, which starts with like this. I sit in one of the dives of 52nd Street, uncertain and afraid. So this feeling of uncertainty, uh, this feeling that something bad going to happen, that this is in the air, is very important. And then uh, I spent one year in New York Public Library. Uh, I've read many things, but one of the most important things for me was the issue of New York Times from 1st of September 1939. Look how interesting is it. You, can, you have first pages of the newspaper with the main news, Germany invaded Poland. But on the third, fourth, fifth page, you have everyday life. Uh, you have in low Manhattan, they opened a new bar, Cinzano. Oh, you can buy very cheap, uh, you can buy summer discount of uh, something. Uh, and for me, it, it was very interesting. There is a minute, there is a second, where everyday life became history and turned into history. And something like this happened on 24th of February. But we should just imagine this. We should imagine how uh, one normal Ukrainian family, they woke up early in the morning, so the kids have some bread and some, uh, I don't know, jam. confiture, jam, uh, something like this, and they eat, and then they announce that the war starts in this moment. So you, you are in between the jam and the war, in between the everyday life, the breakfast, and the history. Yeah. And this is a very important moment and we should have sense for this, for this yeah. seconds. Yeah. And th this brings me back to my comment about IKEA, because uh, not about the store itself, but about indeed the concerns of everyday life and the buying and the selling and the organizing of, yeah. of your ordinary life. It seems like this fits very well with your style of writing in a sense, because it is about this big history but at the same time, you zoom in on something quite small and every day and normal conversations. And so I think in a way it must be important for you to bring these two together, the bigger history, but also saving yeah, in a way the, the smaller stories. Absolutely. Uh, both sides are important. Actually, uh, if you ask me what I will choose, biography or history, I'm on the side of personal story on the side of biography. I think that we can explain uh, the, the brutal systems or totalitarian systems of the war if you explain what happened uh, with the people. Uh, if you want, if you ask me to tell about, okay, I have experience for living in the last decades of socialist Bulgaria, uh, I will not I don't have a memory about all these plenums. Is it the same word, plenum? Assembly? Assemblies. Mm -hmm. Politburo. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask me to name 
one by one the names of the Politburo. I, I, I will know two or three of them. Uh, no, it's not a real memory. Actually, the real memory is what happened inside us. I remember how my father uh, locked, uh, was locked into the kitchen uh, listening some from our VEF or Selena. First we have VEF, after that Selena. Because you can find uh, Free Europe station, uh, station Free Europe or Deutsche Welle. Uh, and I remember clearly how I was afraid for my father because I knew that it was illegally. And also, they were afraid for me. My father was afraid for me and told me, don't tell to anyone that, yeah, what happened here. So this is the real explanation of the, the, the communism, or one of them. Yep. Uh, not just to, to talk about the, I don't know, statistics and so on and so on, and how expensive, also how wasn't expensive. And also the story, it's a very important topic for my books and for myself, to talk about the small and happen things, as I said, to talk about the abandoned world. We were not allowed to travel abroad. You could say, okay, it's not a big problem, right? you're not allowed to travel abroad. No, it's... There is a very, very uh, famous sentence by Montaigne. He said, I never wanted to travel to India, but, but if someone forbid me, me, forbade, me. forbade me to travel to India, I will be the unhappiest person in the world. <laughs> uh, and th this is something that we could talk about. We could talk about the, yeah, the dreaming of the world. We could talk about also even about some stupid things like that we had oranges on the new year. Okay, it's not a big problem, you have apples. You can eat apples, plums, other things. Why oranges? Why bananas? Because I'm, I'm a child, because I want to try, because they're tasty, yeah. and because I can stay on the order, on the queue uh, in the shop, uh, pretending that I'm not with my mother, because they give <laughs> one kilo per family or two kilos, and we could buy four kilos. <laughs> but of course, it's, it's a part of, I'm lying. I, I know that, yeah, it's, it's not legal, it's not okay. <laughs> so maybe these kinds of stories is like the stories you heard from your grandmother in a certain way, that they are um, r more real in a way than the bigger stories that children are taught in school about the heroes of the war and, and so on and so forth. Absolutely, да, защото всички идеологията живее от абстракции. Тя се храни от абстракции. Това е нейната вампирска природа. Ideology feeds off or feeds on abstractions. That is its vampire nature. Идеологията се провалят там, където се опира до човека. Ideologies fail there where it's about the human being. Те не знаят какво да правят с вътрешния свят на човека, с какво да правиш с човека след пет вечерта, след пет след обед. Ideologies don't know what to do with the internal life of a human being. What to do with that human being after 5 p.m. Няма манифестации, няма партийни събрания. Какво правим с този човек? There are no manifestations, no... no parliamentary uh, uh, party uh, assemblies, what are we supposed to do with, with that person? Yeah. Things are hidden in everyday life. Yeah. And as a writer, you feel the impulse and the urge and the task to save that ordinary life from the abstractions. Yes, absolutely. First, because all these important things, they are very perishable. They easily disappeared. Uh, of course, the monument of Soviet army will stay and stay for so many years, but we don't know um, about, I don't know, what about our sorrows in 3 p.m. one day? Yeah. Uh, what about the small things that... that that's why we, we made a book with a small everyday object, inventory book of socialism. Uh, with a friend of mine, and we collected these small objects like uh, empty cigarette boxes or uh, I don't know, chushkupek or this and this and this. Yeah. 
Google Translate. Chushkopek. <laughs> so th things that are under threat of being forgotten by the machinery Paper of roast. big history. Yeah. So let, let's. This is probably a nice, a nice link to, to, to again to your style of writing because in the beginning I mentioned Thomas Mann and uh, and I know your your, your um, fascination with Borges and with uh, Marquez and so. But at the same time, uh, th there's some sort of magical realism perhaps in your book that that is a reflection of reality, uh, the small reality of the world. But it's not a big epic story. Uh, the, the style of writing seems to be more moving like a thought process uh, rather than sort of an epic telling of a story in, from one event to another. And so I, I was wondering if you could comment a little bit on your style of writing and, and the way the, the story moves in a quite a peculiar, peculiar way, I think, and, or an original way. First, I like my books to be as a conversation with the reader. To not be artificial and, how to say, very solidly built. I want to have a space а помните ли тогава или аз казвам аз си спомням как като бяхме малки и ходихме на индианските филми и след това цял ден аз бях Чингачук. Um, and then I say do you remember when I want there to be empty spaces when I say do you remember when I was a, a little kid and I was and when when I was a little kid and we were going to we were going to see the films about Indians and then after uh, after seeing the film I was Chingachuk uh, for for the entire day. Също ми се иска в моите романи да как да кажа да 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 има места където спокойно можеш да спреш основната линия и да си кажеш дайте сега да помислим заедно върху това защо наистина старостта е по-голямата трагедия от смъртта I would like there in my books to be places where you can stop the main plot line and just think with, with the reader okay let's think together why is aging actually the bigger tragedy bigger than death а ако търсите кой убиеца няма да намерите в книгите ми. If you're looking for a murderer in my books you won't find him. Убиеца е времето, не? The murderer is time. And aging apparently. Yeah. And and aging. And aging, yeah. yeah. That's why about the question of apples there was some words about the aging. How to have an apples about the aging. It's not heroic. Not and, but that's why I want to talk about this. Yeah. Let's talk about the things that are not heroic, yeah. that are not monumental, that are perishable. Our meeting is also perishable in a way. Yeah, after 15 minutes or 10 minutes, it will be memory. So it will be. Yeah. <laughs> It right. could be time shelter. I hope it will be time shelter for us. Writing is the is the caring for the perishable. That's really beautiful. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, you're going to read a second fragment of 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 the of the novel, and I wonder if, in preparation for it, you could say uh, some context of where it appears in the novel because it's more towards the end. This is uh, um, almost the end of the novel. Yep. Uh, at the end of the novel, of course. The character, ghost, you know, the narrator, we never know who is talking. Uh, they're losing their memory. And uh, we have this personal aspect of the Alzheimer. Because in the book we have this collective Alzheimer and personal Alzheimer. And of course, the last things we remember are usually the first ones. Ostaryavam. Zatochen se po dalecho trim na destvoto. В далечните празни провинции на старостта, откъдето няма връщане. И Рим вече не отговаря на писмата ми. Някъде миналото съществува като къща или улица, която си напуснал за малко, за пет минути, 
и си се озовал в непознат град. Пишат, че миналото било чужда страна. Глупости. Миналото ми е родина. Бъдещето е чужда страна. Пълна с чужди лица. Няма да стъпя там. Оставете ме да се върна в къщи. Майка ми каза да не закъснявам. 47. Трябва да съм на три. Висок, колкото розите в градината. Стоя бос върху топлата пръст, държа майка си за ръката и гледам дълго една роза в упор. Това е единственото, което си спомням. Първото и последното. И 48. Синдром на непринадлежащите. Никое време не ти принадлежи. Никое място не е твое. Това, което търсиш, не търси теб. Онова, което сънуваш, не те сънува. Знаеш, че нещо е било твое на друго място и в друго време, затова все прекусяваш минали стаи и дни. Но ако си на вярното място, времето е друго. Ако си във вярното време, мястото е различно. Нелечимо. Благодаря. So I'd like to open the discussion to the room now. So if any one of you has a question, we can take a couple of questions for only simple questions. Then, yes. <laughs> yes, simple question. And we do have a microphone that can go around. And you can ask your question, of course, also in Bulgarian if that's a, a preference. Or in any other language that we understand. Um, why do you think that this was your most successful book? It, it won so many prizes, you know, the Booker was a huge pride, proud, made us all proud in Bulgaria. Is this the book that you love the most? Is this your most political book? What caught, I would say, Western Europe's attention, if you want? I hope they could found my previous books as well. <laughs> the Physics of Sorrow, Natural Novel, but There's all my poetry. Wrong with the hmm? There's nothing wrong with the previous ones. Nothing wrong with the previous ones. All my poetry, but uh, yeah, you never know how the thing goes. Actually, uh, it's not the first award for my book, I, I must admit. Natural Novel was translated really on a 20 five languages. Uh, the Physics of Sorrow received some important uh, awards. The Booker Prize is given only for books that are published in UK. It's a terrible thing, yeah. Actually, yeah, why? Because all my books in English, all my previous books that I love also, uh, they are published in US. So they were not eligible for this award. I hope that now, now my, the physics of sorrow will be published uh, in UK. So I hope that it, it could be also long listed, at least long listed for Booker Prize. But why, why they choose this, this book? You know, uh, after ceremony of Booker Prize, before that we, know, we knew nothing about who, who will be, who will uh, be announced as a winner and so on. But after that, we had talk with the jury, and uh, the jury said very good words. I think they appreciated the literature in the book. They have their motivation. It's not good for me to, to tell why they chose this book. They had their motivation, and one of the things was the literature quality of the, the book. Another thing was that the book is very, anti, what to say, connected with what happened now. You know that the book was published in, or maybe in Bulgaria too. The book was published in 2020 in Bulgaria. The book was published in 2020 in Bulgaria. Така че тя по никакъв начин не знаеше какво ще се случи с пандемията или с войната после. So we didn't know in any way what would happen with the pandemic or with the war later on. Първият ден, в който беше публикувана, затвориха всички книжарници. The first day, the day on the public, the day of the publication of the book was the day when all bookstores closed. 
така че тя излезе в най-лошото възможно време за една книга. So this book came out in the worst possible time for a book to appear. В същото време в най-доброто за нея време. But at the same time in the best time for the book itself. Защото това е дистопична книга, дистопия. Because this is a dystopian book. И тя излезе в дистопично време. And it came out in a dystopian time. Това беше нейното време. That was its time. И тези неща много трудно да се изчислят. It's very difficult to calculate these things. Сега знам, че темата за паметта, миналото и за времето е много важна тема. Now I know that the, the topic of memory, time and... Е много важна тема. It's, it's, it, there was one other one. Memory, time and... Забравихте. <laughs> It's very important. It's also a European book, isn't it? A very European book. It transcends boundaries and borders and speaks to potential readers across Europe. This was the other thing that made me very happy about the award. I have been имам преведени книги, срещам се с хора, пътувам и така нататък. For the last 20 years I've had translated books, I'm traveling, I'm meeting readers. И съм усещал от критиката, от чуждата критика, понякога известно така неразбиране или снисхождение, когато видят писател от Источна Европа. And I have felt from foreign critics Uh, a certain sense of misunderstanding or a certain sense of, of, of condescending attitude to writers coming from Eastern Europe. Има такъв стереотип. There is such a stereotype. Ако идваш от Балканите, да речем, трябва да пишеш нещо свързано с историята, исторически роман, нещо за турци или кози рок или нещо такова. If you come from the Balkans, there is this stereotype that you have to write about the Turks or about uh, this. I'm not sure how to translate. Okay. Once I had a reading in Germany with my first novel, Natural Novel. It's a novel about divorce. And uh, one lady from the audience Stand, uh, stand up and told me, okay, but we expected from you other kind of novels. <laughs> okay, what kind of novels do you expect? She said, okay, you're coming from Bulgaria, we want to know about the Turkish horror. And I, I imagined myself with this Kabagaida and uh, with the Poturi and I don't know. <laughs> and I told her, okay, but in Bulgaria people also fall in love or get divorced or they dying from a natural From natural that, causes. Yeah. From natural <laughs> not, causes. Not only with the... With the dagger to the chest. With the, yeah. <laughs> Corn? Capricorn? No. Capric How it's called your rock in English? Capricorn. 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 Capricorn, but it's like Zodiac. Anyway, yes. you know what I mean. Uh, and, and this is very important. So, when I received this award, uh, we were people from four continents, last five finalists. From South Korea, from Caribbean, from Mexico, from Bulgaria. The first thing when they announced long list, they put one map, map on the wall and they mentioned the countries where the long-listed people would come, come from. And there was Bulgaria there. I never, you know, I, I'm never being a kind of nationalist or patriotic. I don't want to, to, to beat myself, myself in the beat chest. Myself. Okay, I'm from the oldest nation in the world or something like this. But in this time, I felt that, okay, it, it's important, not only for me. And after that, when they announced the award, one UK lady from the literature world came to me and told me, to, thank you that you keep the award in Europe <laughs> for you. <laughs> Look, it was a British lady. <laughs> Who take care about who care about Europe, and she said thanks to Bulgarian writer, and this is this was good. And I, I said okay, it was very important. Two things that were very important for me happened with this award. First, 
that we can, in a small languages, or in countries in the periphery of Europe, we have a right and we can talk about the big issues, about the European topics, because it's a book about Europe, of course. The Physics of Sorrow was a book about, not only for Bulgarian Sorrow, uh, but we have a right to talk about the big issues. Uh, and second one, I saw happy people, people who were happy because of the book. In, in Bulgaria, but also in other Balkan countries when I traveled now. In Serbia, in Croatia, in other countries. They, they told me, it's like our writer won the award. <laughs> yeah, it's important because it's the first award for the Balkan uh, writer, for the Balkan countries as well. And it's a kind of spotlight to, the, to, to our region, to the voices from our region. Very good. Other questions? Yes, a couple of people, maybe you were first. Благодаря, ще задам въпроса на български. Ам, говорим за книгата и за памета и за миналото. Какво ви коства като писател да се откъснете все пак от предишния си роман и може би да погледнете в бъдещето към следващия си? Should I translate? Uh, what, what did it cost you as a novelist to, to tear yourself apart from the previous novel and talk about a novel that deals with time and past and memory? It costs 10 years. <laughs> my, my previous novel, The Physics of Sorrow, was published in 2011. This one was published in 2020, so almost 10 years. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's not easy to, to go out from, the, from one novel. It's not easy to, to go into the novel, but also not easy to go out because yeah, I became an expert of uh, physics of sorrow. Expert of the physics. Yeah, I had to learn everything about quantum physics, but also to learn many things about sorrow. And let's say some words about the, the physics of sorrow. Actually, one of the most difficult things was the translation of the word sorrow. Mm -hmm. It was yeah, really, yeah, and... Uh, uh, my translator, Angela Rudell, uh, she told me that there is a doctor thesis in s some of the American universities about the, how difficult it is to translate, about the untranslatable uh, word sorrow. Uh, because when you translate sorrow, you don't translate just a word, you translate a concept. Yeah. It's a, it's a and concept. What's, what's the word in Bulgarian? The, in Bulgaria, it's a beautiful word and a short one. Taga. Taga. Yeah. yeah. Taga do, you is a, do you have the impression that sorrow catches, the word sorrow catches everything no. that is in the word? No, no, no. No. no uh, in the word taga, there is something similar to this. Uh, I don't know, Chekhov's Tasca. Yeah, Tasca. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. There is something like longing, yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of longing yeah. to be somewhere where you will never be. Yeah. And I have this conception that Bulgarian sorrow is a sorrow on the second degree. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Explain. Uh, yeah, uh, because no, we have, uh, we have Huzun. Huzun is the Turkish word for sorrow. It's a, it's a sorrow of the big empire. We have also Saudade, which is a Portuguese word, yes. also on the ex-empire, the great empire. Uh, so this is their sorrows, the imperial sorrows, <laughs> let's say. It's a sorrow about the half of the world you owned and you lost it. <laughs> the Bulgarian sorrow, we never owned half of the world. Uh, the Bulgarian sorrow is another kind of sorrow. It's a sorrow for the countries you never, or the world you never owned, but you lost it again. <laughs> I mean, you, you never, never it, been you there. Lost it, yeah, yeah you, it's a word, let's say, the word of my father and mother, the sorrow of my father and mother to Paris. They never been there. But they have their longing, their dream for Paris, they invented them. And yeah, when I was there, I called for the first time because of my novel, Natural Novel, it was in 2020. Um, 
So it, it's a story connected with my grandmother, but I will not tell it. Uh, but I called to, to my father from Champs-Élysées, and I said, yeah, Papa, I'm here on Champs-Élysées. And, but you know, it's not something. <laughs> it's like nothing. <laughs> and he was, how? how? How could you say this? For him, he had his Paris. His Champs-Élysées is much more beautiful than mine. You know, because it's, he worked on this. He invented Paris. It's invented it things. So this is this kind of sorrow. You never been. You don't have nostalgia because nostalgia is to have, you know, nostus and algus, to have algus, to have pain for the places you've been, but you are now far away from them. So Bulgaria sorrow could be also for the places you've never been, <laughs> but you have sorrow to them, like Tsarigrad, Tsarigradski Tepalati. So the many kinds of sorrow. You'd be interesting to know, Georgi, that one of the most famous classic Belgian novels is called The yeah, Sorrow I saw in the Belgium, bookshop today the and I make Belgium. a picture, The yes, Sorrow of Belgium. It's from the 1980s by Hugo Klaus, one of the yeah. classic uh, Belgian writers. Okay, I think we still have time for one or two Ooh. final questions. Yeah. Not too many questions. Who has so the I best final question? <laughs> who has the best final question, yeah. I think uh, the lady uh, was first... Благодаря. Добър вечер. Стори ми се преди малко, че разговора направи един кръг. Започнахте с баба ви, дядо ви и историите, които ви разказват. И накрая стана въпрос за остаряването и как да го осмислим, как да го преживеем. Мисля, че да разказваме историите на по-младите, нашите истории, може би там е смисъл, особено днес, толкова за бързания свят с технологиите, когато всичко се сменя много бързо. Може би това е смисъла да разказваме още повече дори от преди. И в този смисъл си спомням ваш проект с Яна Генова от преди, може би вече 20 години или 25. Аз живях в социализма. Вето аз лично намерих много интересен и много важен и смислен. Дали няма възможност да се върнем към този вид споделяне. Благодаря. Should I translate? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Um, basically, the conversation made a loop. You started uh, the converse, We started the conversation with you talking about your grandmother and grandfather, and we end. We are ending the conversation. We're talking about old age. Isn't there where a meaning lies uh, that we should share? We we should tell our stories to the younger generation. And um, in that sense, I, I think back to a project that you had with Jana Genova about 20, 25 years ago, I lived socialism. Isn't this something that, that we should be doing again? Yes, with Jana Genova we made an inventory of socialism, and with other friends we made I live in socialism, which is for gathering stories. With Jana Genova we, we, we created a book called um, Inventory, inventory book of socialism, and with another friend, we uh, we, we did a book called "I Lived Socialism." И това е много важен въпрос, който казвате. Аз наистина вярвам, че разказвайки историите си един на друг, че разказването е важно, но още нещо друго е важно. And you have a very good question, and I do believe that it is very important to tell our stories, but there is also something else which is important. Да слушаме историите на другите. To listen to other people's stories. Да, да имаме ухо за историите на другите. Да, да имаме нещо, което може да наречем story hearing, not only storytelling. To have an ear for other people's stories. To have a story hearing. А, защото, ясно, един от основните проблеми е, че ние не си говорим в последните години. Because it's clear one of the main problems is that we are not speaking to each other in recent years. And it, and, it looks, and it may well turn out that with new media and with, with artificial intelligence, we may be speaking to each other even less. Като знак за някаква голяма самота, която, която настъпва. In a way, the advent of AI, artificial intelligence now, is, 
is coming to replace something. It's coming to signal a great solitude that is upon us. Оказва се, че понякога е по-лесно да си говориш с тази машина, с програма, отколкото с друг човек. It turns out that sometimes it's easier to talk to a program, to a machine, than to talk to a human being. И това ще бъде проблем. Ние трябва да мислим върху това. And this will be a problem and we need to think about this. И трябва да разказваме историите си на децата си. And we need to tell our stories to our children. Ще завърша с една история, която се случи по време на опашката за автографии в София след наградата. I will finish with a story that um, happened, or I, you heard, <laughs> no, that happened, <laughs> that happened while uh, the, the line, the huge line of, of readers who wanted an autograph after the Booker Prize in Sofia was ongoing. Имаше много момичета и момчета, млади хора, ученици. There were many young people, adolescents, 15, 16, 17 years old, who were buying the book in order to give it to their parents as a gift. But, but there were also many parents who were buying the book to give it as a gift to their kids. Много техните деца не бяха в България, не са в България, понеже аз си говоря с хората и да, разпитвам. And many of their children are not in Bulgaria because I talk to my readers and I ask them and they tell me that their kids are not in, in Bulgaria. Но имаше и няколко семейства с много малки деца, година-две. But there were also a few families with very small children, one, two years old. И те искаха да напиша книгата за тези деца. And they wanted me to sign the book for these children. И когато ви питах защо, нали, те още не знаят. When I asked them why, те ми отговориха, ами защото като пораснат, те ще прочетат тази книга и един ден, когато нас няма да ни има, тази книга ще остане при тях. Because when they grow old, they will read the book. When they grow up, they will read the book. And one day when we will not be here, the book will be, they will be here and the book will be with them. Това е, за да свърша с нещо хубаво за нас, защото ние се се оплакваме. I would like to finish on a, on, a, on a positive note because we are always complaining. Този тип истории за деца и родители, които си подаряват взаимно книгата. This type of story about children and parents who are gifting a book to each other. И тази чиста радост, която видях обикновени хора, не литератори, след наградата. And this pure joy that I saw in, in ordinary people, not literary people. Е нещо, което е страшно хубаво и важно, което се случва. Is something greatly important and, and, and very good that is happening. И това трябва да развиваме. This is what we need to develop. Това е само за българската публика. Only for, <laughs> only for the Bulgarian audience. Thank you. May I suppose that on this note we will uh, we will end uh, the public part of the conversation. Obviously, yeah. there will be an opportunity to interact with Georgi. There will be selling and signing of books afterwards. There's only one thing to do now for me, and that's to thank you for the opportunity that you gave us to do some story hearing. Um, we enjoyed it very much, and um, thank you all for being here. <laughs>